everyone, this is Joy. Welcome back to another Lawn Fawn video. For today's card, I have made a slimline card using the Build a Castle die set, along with the Tiny Fairy Tale and Little Dragon stamp sets, and the Hillside Brick and Starry Sky stencils. This has made a really beautiful, magical card. I have started with the Build a Castle dies, and I have cut them out of Lawn Fawn's white cardstock. And I'm going to be doing some inking with Narwhal ink using the brick stencil. I'm adding just a little bit of ink, not too dark, because I wanted to have brick detail all over this whole castle. This is the main part of the castle. Then I have this front center piece, which you can use or you could leave out of the castle. I am obviously going to be using that for my castle. And then there is two side pieces that adhere to the castle. I'll be doing brick stenciling on both of those. Again, I am using Narwhal ink from Lawn Fun. Adding just a little bit of ink here and there, not too dark. Now I'm going to finish up this last column. And now we've got this beautiful bricked castle. Now I have die cut out of white cardstock the door and the drawbridge for the castle. And I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring on here because I want to make it look like it is wood. So I'm starting with E55 and I'm laying down that color, solid color, coming in with E57 with a little bit of a flicking motion at the top of the door, at the bottom of the door, flicking it into the center, and on the sides and bottoms of the door frame. The flicking motion gives it the look of wood grain. Then I'm going to come in with E49 and do a little bit more of the flicking, not nearly as much, not as heavy as the other colors, because this is a very, very dark color. Again, the top going down and the bottom going up and on the sides of the frame. Then I'm coming back in with E55 and blending that all out to soften the wood grain look. If it gets a little too blended out, which it did, I came back in a little bit more with that E57 and a little bit more of the E49. Again, I wanted this to have the fun wood grain look and so that is why I opted to use Copic markers for that. Now I am stamping images from the Tiny Fairy Tale and the Little Dragon stamp sets. From the Little Dragon, I am stamping the dragon and the flames. From the Tiny Fairy Tale, I am stamping the princess and the knight. I'll be using Copic markers. And I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink because it is Copic friendly. And here I am using BG 11, 13, and 18 for the dragon. I feel like dragons need to feel magical, so I feel like a turquoise and purple and pink dragon is perfect. Turquoise is my absolute favorite color, so that's kind of a no-brainer there. So I, what I did was added my BG 11, colored the whole dragon. Then I came in with BG 18 for the darker shadows, and then BG 13 blended that down a little bit, and then came back with the BG11 over the whole rest of the dragon just to soften all of those shadows. For his belly, it is BV11, 13, and 17. And the same for his little spikes going down his back. And for the wings and the horns, it is RV14 and 21. For the knight, he's very, very simple. He is, I'm using C1, 4, and 8. So I'm using a combination of C1 and 4 for the lighter part of his armor and C4 and 8 for the darker part of his armor. I'm also using E00 for the skin and adding a little bit of that uh, BG11 and 13 to his shield and his feather on top. For the cute little fairy princess, she is, I'm using RV14 and 21 and R20 for her dress, and a little bit of that BG11 and 13 for her crown. I did speed up the coloring, obviously, because 
we want to get together of putting together the build a castle die set. For the flames is Y11, YR15, and YR07. I am using the coordinating dies, and I'm just adhering that down with a little bit of low-tack tape. I'm using purple tape, but washi tape works great as well. And I'm going to run those through my die cut machine, making sure that these are lined up nice so I have a nice little edge around all of my images. Now let's put this castle together. As you can see there, there is a little embossed area and that shows you where that piece goes on the castle. I have put some foam tape behind the two columns and I'm gonna add that to the sides. And I have put double foam tape on that center piece because I wanted that to pop out more. You could leave that piece out and the castle would look just how it is now and that would be really cute as well. I'm adding that center piece, again popped up with double foam tape, and I'm going to add these, the top parts of the castle, I don't even know what these are called, but I have die cut those out of Lawn Fawn's Storm Cloud cardstock. That's that larger piece, there's two die cuts and they almost look the same size, but that's the larger piece and that goes on that center square piece. I die cut two of those small pieces that go on the columns and then I will adhere that top piece on the top. I am using Lawn Fawn's glue tube to adhere this down. I like using liquid glue for things like this because then I'm able to slide it into place. Now that that's done, let's adhere the door. And I think this door is so cute because it has score lines so you can open up the door. So I'm adding a little bit of glue just to the frame, not to the doors because I want those to be able to move and I'm centering that in the front. Again, if you left that front piece off and just put your door in the back, it would look recessed and that would be a really cool look as well. I am adhering down the door handles, which I have die cut out of Lawn Fawn's black licorice cardstock. And now we're going to adhere the cute little flags. There's two flags that come in as, as the dies, there's one with a heart and one with a star, and I decided to use the heart. And I have die cut that out of Ballet Slippers cardstock. And I also die cut it out of Guava cardstock because I want to add the little hearts in the center with the guava. So the flags themselves are Ballet Slippers and the little insert inlay hearts are Guava cardstock. And I do like the contrast. I think that turned out really pretty. I've also die cut the frames. You get two, you get a window die cut and a frame die cut. I die cut the frame out of the guava cardstock and I also die cut it out of the storm cloud cardstock because I want to enter, insert <laughs> the storm cloud inside to make it look like you're looking into a dark castle. So adding a little bit of glue and taking those storm cloud insert pieces and adding that inside of the window frames. Now I'm gonna to glue together the cute little flags. I die cut the flag pole part out of Lawn Fawn's black licorice cardstock, and then the little flag part itself out of guava cardstock and adhere those together. And I'm going to glue that to the two towers on the side of the castles. I added a little bit of liquid glue to the base of the flagpole and I adhered that down to the first column and then the second one to the second column. Now also there is a big window frame for the top part of that castle and I die cut that out of three colors of cardstock. I die cut that out of guava, ballet slippers, and sugar plum because I wanted to have the look of a stained glass window. So the one that I have die cut here is the guava cardstock, and then I will insert the sugar plum and ballet slippers later once we adhere the castle to this background. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is a slimline card, and I die cut the slimline base from the large slimline with sliders die set, and it's got a great stitched edge around. 
and I'm doing some ink blending to give the look of a very magical sky. And I've started with Distress Oxide Ink and Wilted Violet, and now I'm doing Shaded Lilac. I'm going in with Picked Raspberry and Spun Sugar. Now at the bottom of the card, I have used the Hillside Stencil as a mask because I will be stenciling the hillside after I'm done in or inking the top, then I will ink the hillside at the bottom. So again, I'm just using that as a mask right now because I don't want any ink getting down below. So now I'm just adding my sponge sugar ink and I'm just blending everything together until I get a really nice soft blend between each color. And I really do feel like this looks like a great magical sky. So now I'm going to move that stencil up and now it's not masking anymore. Now I can use it to ink up the hillside. And I'm going to be using shaded lilac. Then I will come in with chipped sapphire at the top. I wanted this to have the dark feel of a nighttime look. And so that's why I'm coming in with this darker color. But it still has that purple effect, which I really feel looks like it's magical. Okay, now I've also die cut out of Lawn Fawn's white cardstock, the Puffy Cloud Backdrop Portrait Die, and I'm inking that with Wilted Violet and Shaded Lilac. And I just got a scratch piece of paper and just stuck that in between each cloud so I could ink it and it not get everywhere else. That way I can save the clouds at the bottom that I'm not using. So once those are done being inked up, I'm going to take my scissors and trim this apart because I want this to go at the top of my card, but I want it to be stacked on top of each other. So I'm just trimming those right off to the, off the sides. And then, like I said, they will stack on top of the card. Now I have taken the Starry Sky stencil and I'm adhering that to my background and I'm using the hillside stencil for the mask because I don't want any stars on the actual hill. I just want it in the sky and I'm inking it with chipped sapphire. I felt like this color would really pop off of that really fun purpley and pink background. And I cannot wait for you guys to see when you pull this back. It's so pretty. Isn't that so pretty? And I'm not worried that there's no stars at the top because we're going to be gluing down the clouds and you won't see that anyways. Now I've taken a piece of foam tape and doubled it up because I want this top cloud to be really tall because even the cloud below it is also going to have foam tape behind it. So the top piece has double pieces of foam, foam tape and this lower cloud has a single piece of foam tape. I'm going to add a little bit more foam tape underneath now that it's adhered down to make sure it's got good stability and stays popped up. Again, doubling the foam tape on that back piece and a single foam tape on that bottom piece. Just gonna trim off the excess and then we've got this beautiful card. Now I'm going to adhere down the drawbridge at the bottom first and then I can line my castle up, up to it. And like I said, this slimline card has the stitched edge, which we know Lawn Fawn is just known for. And so I'm lining that up right above the stitched edge and then adhering my castle lining up with the drawbridge. Now it's time to insert those pieces to make the stained glass window. Again, I am using guava, sugar plum, and ballet slipper cardstocks for this. I'm adding just a little bit of liquid glue in the openings and sticking in those pieces and I'm alternating the, the, the pink and the purples. And right in the center is a little piece of guava cardstock. I'm going to add some glossy accents to that now. Normally I would wait, but I need to add my princess to this card. And so I need to not have to work around her by putting in the glossy accent. So I'm adding that again to make it look like a window. And the different colors of cardstock to me makes it look like it's stained glass. I'm just cleaning up the edges if I got any glossy accents outside of the lines. I'm just going to finish cleaning that up. And as you guys can see, that turned out so pretty. Now I'm going to add some foam tape behind my little princess right at the bottom because I do want her to have some dimension as well. 
and just adhere her down. And then the prince is going to be at the top of the castle because he is going to be fighting this dragon and saving the princess. That is the story behind my card. So we've got this cute dragon that we're going to adhere down. He's tucked in a little bit to the clouds. I didn't want to hide him too much because he's just so darn cute. I'm going to add some foam tape behind one of the flames. And the other flame is just going to be adhered straight to the cardstock. I do like to add dimension wherever possible, and I just felt like that would be a fun thing to do. Now I'm going to stamp the sentiment, have a magical day. I have prepped my cardstock with an anti-static bag because we don't want little stray pieces of embossing powder anywhere. And I stamped the first part of the sentiment, which is have a, with Lawn Fawn's clear ink, clear embossing ink, and I am lining up the magical day sentiment and stamping that again with clear ink and using Lawn Fawn's white embossing powder and we're going to heat that through. You definitely could do this before you put your um, image onto the card but it still worked out just fine. I'm cleaning up any little spots of embossing powder making sure my heat gun is nice and hot before I take it to my paper and that helps it to not warp so much. Now that that's done, I'm adding some black glaze pen to the dragon's eye. And I'm also adding some to the door handles. You also could use glossy accents on the door handles if you wanted them to be shiny. I'm coming in with a white gel pen and adding some highlights to the dragon, to the knight, and to the princess on, their, on the dress, on the knight's armor. A little bit of cute cheeky dots on the cheeks for the dragon. And I'm also going to be adding some white dots to the background. I felt like that would brighten up the background as well and, and seems like magical things are going on in the sky. It definitely, that kind of detail definitely changes how your card looks. And I think it makes a huge difference when you take the time to do things like that. I also took a glittery gel pen and added some dots as well to the background. I am coming in with some glossy accents now and adding it to the horns of the dragon. I did add it to the wings, but I ended up adding some Nouveau uh, glitter drops and white blizzard later on. I added glossy accents to the flames, to the knight's sword, and to the center of his shield. I added it to the windows on the castle and to the little hearts inside of those flags on the front of the castle. I'm going to come in with Nouveau Glitter Drops in White Blizzard and add that to the crown of the princess and to the wings of the dragon. I felt like the wings needed to be a little glittery. Now I have taken Lawn Fawn's Liquid Stardust and just added a little bit to my work surface, shaking up the bottle really well, and I'm painting it onto the two clouds at the top. I felt like we needed some more glitter and shine and I'm just adding that, painting it directly on, and it is very, very glittery. It turned out so perfect. And as you can see there, it's nice and shimmery and shiny, and this card just turned out fabulous. This Build a Castle die is just absolutely wonderful. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope that you feel inspired by this project, and I hope it makes you want to play with the Build a Castle die set. Thanks again. Bye.